Hey guys, this is Eric Vasquez here with a brand new tutorial for you from designcuts.com. Now today we're going to be working with the Essential Mockup Templates Bundle featuring thousands of professional mockups to help you showcase your work. And we're going to be using just a small sample of this amazing bundle to create a fitness and design inspired magazine mockup. Some of the freebies that we're going to be working with today include items from H3 Design, Mockup Cloud, and Zippy Pixels. So if you're ready to get started, fire up Photoshop and let's begin. The first thing we want to do here is create a new document and let's make sure that our document is set to inches and we want it to be about 8.25 inches wide by about 11.6 inches tall. Okay, we want the resolution to be 300 dpi, color mode RGB, 8-bit is fine, and the background contents can be set to white. Now the last thing I'm going to do here is just name my file fitness and design magazine and then go ahead and hit create. Now we have our new document and we just have a single layer here with a lock next to it so let's just double click on that click OK and now we can unlock that layer you can just double click here and name it whatever you want or you can leave it as layer 0. Okay now the first thing we're going to do is bring in our first texture so let's come up to the file menu come down to where it says place embedded and we want to navigate to our first image it's going to be a painted metal texture all right, so let me just go here into the freebies folder for the tutorial. And this one is courtesy of H3 Design. So we're going to open up the painted metal texture, click on place, and then it's going to bring it into Photoshop as a smart object. But once it's brought in here, you'll see that there's a bounding box around it. So that means that we can adjust this before we place it. So what we want to do is actually rotate this a bit so that we can have it, you know, be oriented in the same way that our canvas is. So I'm going to hold the control key click anywhere on the image and choose rotate 90 degrees clockwise. Now what we're going to do is hold the alt option and shift keys and drag out from any of the four corners of the bounding box just to scale it up from the center until it fills the entire canvas and then go ahead and press either enter or return on the keyboard. Now you'll see that the name of the layer matches the name of the file painted underscore metal and it's automatically set to be a smart object which is great. So now that we have this in here, we can just go ahead and get rid of the BG layer. And what we want to do from here is add a hue saturation adjustment layer. So come down here to the adjustment layer icon, choose hue saturation from the list. And now all we're going to do is move the hue slider up to about 145. That's going to give us this nice red here. 144. All right. And then we have a hue saturation adjustment layer applied. Now the next thing we want to do is press the letter U on the keyboard and that's going to give us our rectangle tool. And if you look at the top toolbar here, you can see that you have a few options for this. You have your fill color, which we want to leave set to none. So that's just a white box with a red stripe through it. You have the stroke here, which we're going to change. And you have the number or the width of your stroke. So let's first go ahead and change the width of the stroke to 75 pixels click on the stroke here and we want to change the color. So an easy way to do that is to click on this color spectrum icon here. It looks like a little rainbow icon. And then we're just going to type in the hex value D3C00C. And that's this kind of slightly darkish yellow color. Go ahead and hit OK. And now we're going to grab our tool again by pressing U. Click in the upper left hand corner and drag all the way down here to the bottom right and then let go. But again, we have to come back up to the top and change the value to 75 pixels. Okay, and now we have a nice border going all the way around our cover. So what we're going to do from here is select that top layer, hold the shift key, and select the painted metal texture. Press command G on the keyboard to put them into a group folder. And then we're just going to rename this BG. Now let's go ahead and create a new layer. You can do this by clicking on the add a new layer icon at the bottom of the layers palette. And then just go ahead and click or you can use the keyboard shortcut command control plus alt option plus shift and the letter N on the keyboard. Now once you've done that go ahead and press the letter T to get your type tool and now just click somewhere in the upper left portion of your image. Now what we're going to do here is just type out the word fitness okay and then come up here to the window menu and choose character to open your character panel if you don't already have it. Now what we want to do here, we're going to be working with a free font from defont.com and the first one we're going to be using is called Dream MMA. Now this is a font that you can download from defont.com and there is a link for it 
in the written portion of this tutorial. So go ahead and check that out. You guys can download it for free right now, and it's a pretty nice looking font. Okay, so I'm just going to highlight my text here just to grab all of that. And then I'm going to change the point size to about 79. Hit return. And we're also going to change the color here. Okay, so for the color, we want to use FCFF00, which is a slightly brighter yellow color. And let me just go ahead and grab my move tool over here so I can move the text somewhere in the middle here. As cool as this font is, when I'm typing out these letters, and I'm just doing it in all lowercase, I should mention that because for some reason this font doesn't really have any uppercase letters. You can see it's just defaulting to a different font. So you want to make sure that you're just using lowercase letters here. But one other thing you'll notice is that once you type this out, the spacing is a little bit inconsistent between each of these letters. So we need to go in there and just manually correct that. The way that we're going to do this is by, once again, using our type tool. And then once you click inside here, you can use the left and right arrows to move your cursor in between different letters. So we're going to move our cursor between the F and the I, and then hold the Alt Option key and tap the right arrow. And that's going to add space between those two letters. Do the same thing for the letter T. And this time in between the T and the N, let's actually remove a space by holding Alt Option and using the left arrow. Okay, again, hold Alt Option and the right arrow to increase the space, or Alt Option and the left arrow to decrease the space. And the idea here is just that you want some nice even spacing between each of these letters. All right, and that looks pretty good. Now, what we're gonna do here is press Command or Control plus J on the keyboard to duplicate the layer, then Command, Control, and the left bracket to move it down one position in the layers palette. Press Command T to do a free transform, and then just hold Shift and drag it down below the original copy. Grab your type tool, click inside here a few times to highlight the text, and just go ahead and change it to design. Now, this time we're gonna click inside again to highlight it and change the color to solid white. And you can see the hex value for that. It's just F six times. And now click OK. And let's just quickly adjust the kerning between some of these letters like we did in the word fitness. I'm just adding a bit of space here and that looks pretty good. All right, there's not a lot to it guys, but paying attention to those kind of details really makes a big difference in the overall look and feel of the design. Now what I want to do is create a plus symbol. Now unfortunately this typeface doesn't have a plus symbol, so we're just going to go ahead and create one. So the way I'm going to do that is by selecting the fitness text, pressing command J to duplicate it again, command and the left bracket two times to move it down. And now I'll press the letter V to get my move tool, hold shift and just tap the down arrow or hold the down arrow until your text is down below the previous two layers. Now I'm going to click inside here with my type tool and delete all the letters except for the letter I. Okay, I'm going to zoom in a bit just so I can see what I'm doing here. And I'm just doing that by pressing Command and Plus on the keyboard. Now I'm going to copy this layer one more time by pressing Command J, press Command T to do a free transform. And I'm just looking to rotate this a bit. And the idea is that I want the angle to kind of match the direction of the other side here. Okay, so let me show you what I mean. Once I have, you know, once I have this going across here, I'm going to press Command T, hold the Control key and click on it and then choose flip horizontal from this drop down list. Now it's going the right way. Okay, and what you want to do here is press command J one more time to create another copy and then just tap the left arrow to make it extend a bit further on the left side. So you should end up with something like this that's pretty even looking on all four sides. And then what we want to do is select the top copy here, I copy to, hold shift to select the original layer and then press command E to merge them all together. Now I'm gonna press Command T to do a free transform, move it up here next to the word design, and then hold Alt Option and Shift and just scale it down a bit from the center. Okay, because we don't want it to be as large as our text, it should be smaller. Now I'm just gonna tap it down a few times and maybe a bit to the left, just so I can get this portion of the D to kind of line up with the right side of that plus symbol. All right, and that's looking pretty good. Now select the merged I layer, or the plus symbol. You can go ahead and rename that if you want. And then hold shift and select fitness and press command G once again to put them into a group folder. Double click the group one text and rename it TT. All right, for title treatment. Now what we're going to do from here is create a cool effect that allows some of this texture to show through. So I'm just going to double click on the title treatment group folder and you'll notice here in the main layer style window that we have some blending options. 
Now, the one that I'm concerned with is at the very bottom where it says underlying layer. You'll notice that there's these two join tabs on the far left side, but we actually want to separate these. You can see if you just try to drag them, what's happening to our text. But if we separate these, we can get a much more natural and cool looking effect. So what we're gonna do here is hold Alt Option on the keyboard and then click on just the right tab. And I'm gonna slide it over here until it's set to about 105. Okay, somewhere around there. And now I'm just going to select the far left tab and move it in towards the right until it's set to about 26. And then go ahead and press OK. Now it kind of looks like this is painted on and a little bit worn on our texture. But we want to intensify the effect just a bit more. So select that whole TT group folder and press Command J. And now press the letter 5 on the keyboard to reduce the opacity of this folder to 50%. So you should now have two copies. You have one at 100% one at 50%, and you'll notice this little icon here letting us know that we have some blending styles applied. All right, so now select the top copy, hold shift, select the copy below, press command G to put it into a new group folder, double click the group one text and call this TT. At this point, we're ready to begin bringing in some of our sporty looking objects. So the first object that I'm going to bring in here are the ski glasses. So I'm just gonna choose open, and you'll see here that it's just an empty PSD file except for one folder. So I'm just gonna move that tab to the side, click and drag this into my main document. All right, now I can press Command and the tilde key to go over to my window and just close it. And now I'll select the folder and press Command T to do a free transform. Okay, so what I wanna do is maybe just rotate them a bit, make them a little smaller, and maybe position it somewhere up here so that it overlaps the bottom of the letters. And you can see that already begins to add some depth to our design. All right, let's go back and press Command O on the keyboard to choose Open. We'll come back here and open the Laptop 2 PSD file. And we're going to do the same thing. Just move the tab to the side, click and drag the entire folder into our main document, Command tilde to come over to the other tab, and then close it. Command T to do a free transform. And this time I'm going to position the laptop somewhere over here so it's kind of cropped out a little bit a little bit lower perhaps, and just playing around with it, you know, playing around with the positioning and the size of our laptop. All right, somewhere about there looks pretty good. And you can see also that it's on top of the ski glasses. All right, so let's move on, press Command O once again. And this time we're going to open the helmet, helmet three PSD, open it up. We're gonna bring this one in, Command tilde, and the shortcut to close out of a tab or a window is also Command, Control, plus W on the keyboard, just in case you wanted to know that. And now, now that we have our helmet in here, I'm just looking at it. It has this bluish tint on it that I want to get rid of. So I'm going to click on this arrow next to the Helmet 3 folder, and you'll see that there's a subfolder here called Custom Color. So I'm just going to poke out the eyeball there to turn that off. And you can see that now our helmet is just white. All right, so collapse the folder. Press Command, Control, plus T to do a free transform. Rotate it a bit and slide it over here towards the right. I want it to be kind of cropped off on the right side here, maybe moved up a little bit, and then hold Alt, Option, and Shift and just scale it down a bit as well. Somewhere about here looks pretty good. Now let's press Command O once again to open up our next object. This time let's open up the Towel PSD, and we're just gonna repeat this process, click and drag it inside, Command tilde, Command W, press Command T to do a free transform, and now I'm just gonna move this somewhere on the bottom here, maybe rotate it or play around with it a little bit. Just until you find you know, a, a size or position that you're happy with. Maybe somewhere about here looks pretty good. Press return on the keyboard. And now what we wanna do is change the color of the towel. So I'm going to once again click the arrow on the towel folder. And this time I just have a towel layer and a shadow. Okay, so if I wanna change the color of this towel, what I'm going to have to do is add an adjustment layer. So select the towel layer, hold the Alt Option key, and then click on the adjustment layer icon and choose solid color. And then you'll be seeing this dialog box here where you can just check off use previous layer to create clipping mask, click okay. And now we can enter a hex value, A4, 0825, which is this nice red color. Go ahead and click OK. And then let's go ahead and change the blending mode to 
Maybe not multiply. That's a little bit too dark. I think color looks okay, but you can try a few of these other ones here as well. And you can also layer some of these. So for example, if we wanted to do color, we could then press Command J to duplicate this layer. But you'll see that this layer is now outside of the clipping mask. So if we want to put it back in, we just press Command Control in the left bracket to move it down one spot, and then Command Control in the right bracket to move it above the original adjustment layer. All right, but you can see now that it still has that arrow next to it indicating that the clipping mask is applied. So now you can change the blending mode of this duplicate layer and see that it creates an even more interesting effect. All right, so then let's go ahead and select that layer. Maybe press 5 to reduce the opacity a bit just so that we get a slightly darker looking result. Okay, now let's move on. Go ahead and press Command Control plus O once again. And now we're going to open the Muesli PSD file. And this is, I think, basically like a healthy cereal, like oats, pretty, uh, pretty good, pretty nutritious. So let's add it to our design here. Press Command T. And we're going to put it down here on the bottom somewhere so that it overlaps maybe the piece of the towel here. And then press Return to apply the changes. Command tilde, Command W to close that tab. Press Command O once again to open. And now let's see what other objects we can bring in here. Let's go ahead and open up the bottle water PSD. Press return on the keyboard, drag the tab to the side, and go ahead and bring it into our main document. Press Command T to do a free transform, and now we can bring it down here to the lower portion of the design. And maybe just have it laying on top of the towel here so that it's kind of cropped out, and go, then go ahead and press return to apply the changes. All right, and you can also use the arrows to kind of reposition it however you like. You can do that with any of these objects, really. I mean, you're not locked into any one way of positioning these. Feel free to move them around. Experiment a little bit and see what you like. Okay, so now for the water, there's a few things that we're going to need to adjust. So I'm just going to zoom in a bit. Press the space bar to get the hand tool, and then just kind of click and drag over here so you can get a better look at the bottle. And now press letter B on the keyboard. Actually, now that we're zoomed in, let's go ahead and expand the contents here of the bottle of water. And let's just take a look at what layers we have inside here. So there is a subfolder called Bottle, and then you'll notice a layer called Light Areas. So if I turn that on and off, you can kind of see what that layer looks like. All right, so we want to go ahead and add a layer mask to this layer. Press the letter B on the keyboard to get your brush tool, and then use the right bracket to make the brush a little bit larger. Now, if you look at the top toolbar here, you'll see that I currently have a soft brush selected. But if my brush were hard, a way that I could adjust the softness is by holding shift and tapping the left bracket. If I hold shift and type, tap the right bracket, you can see in the top toolbar there that I now have a hard brush, or a harder edged brush, I should say. All right, and also notice the opacity here is set pretty low to about 20%. Now, the last thing is that you want to make sure that you have a solid black foreground color selected. If you don't, simply press the letter D on the keyboard and then use the letter X to toggle back and forth between your foreground and background color until you have black in the foreground. Now all we're going to do is click a few times here with that layer mask applied just over some of these lighter areas of the bottle to help reveal some of the towel below. All right, and something like that looks pretty good. We just want to tone it down a bit because the white is a little bit stark and heavy. Now from here, what we want to do is change the label. We're going to play around with that a little bit, so go ahead and expand the contents here you'll see that there's a label smart object file. So go ahead and double click on that. And it now opens up a new tab. All right, so I'm just gonna move this tab to the side a little bit here. Come back into my main document. Move that here as well, maybe zoom out a bit. Okay, and I can close this. And now we just have our main magazine cover layout. And we have our smart object, the empty smart object file. Okay, so what we want to do here is place what we want to appear on this label inside of this file. So come back to your layout, select the BG folder, hold shift and select the TT folder just above it, and then click and drag it into this empty smart object file. Now what I want to do here is press command T and then zoom out. And I'm just trying to do a free transform, but if you can't see the bounding box, just press command zero and it will fit the entire thing to your screen. Okay, now all I'm going to do is hold the Alt option and Shift keys to scale it down a bit from the center. Hold Shift and then move it down so that I can kind of see what I'm dealing with here. 
All right, now press return once you're happy with the size and placement. And the only other thing here is that we don't want this border to be showing. So I'm gonna go into the BG folder and just turn off this top layer here. And now if I press Command Control plus S on the keyboard, it's going to save that out so that you can then see what that looks like with the label applied. All right, and if I come back up here, if I wanna adjust the text a little bit more, maybe I wanna move it up a bit, press Command S again, and you will see that it's now just updated in your main file. So let's move it up just a little bit more so that we can see a bit more of it in our main document. And then once you're happy with the size and placement, press Command W to close that window. Now you should be back in your main file and have something like this. Okay, so you can now see our label design has been applied. Now there's one more thing I want to adjust here really quickly, just coming into the bottle subfolder. And let's see if we have anything here. There's a layer just above the light areas layer that we applied a mask to called non-transparent areas. And you can see when I turn that on and off, it's actually helping our label read a little bit better when it's off. So I'm just gonna leave that layer off for now, collapse the bottle folder, close that, close the main bottle water, and there you go. So we're looking pretty good so far. Now all I'm gonna do is select the top object here, the bottle of water, hold shift and select the ski glasses, press command G to put them into a group folder, double click the group one text and just rename this layer objects. And once you're happy with the size and positioning of your elements, we can go ahead and add some more text. So I want these text layers to be below my objects. So first I'm gonna just select the TT, title treatment folder layer, and then add a new layer just above that. Press T to get your, te your type tool once again. And this time let's just type out the word run. Now I'm gonna press Command Control plus A to select all the text and just bring over my character panel so that I can see what I'm doing here. Now let's go ahead and change the font from Myriad or whatever you currently have to the font Go Bold. Okay, and Go Bold is actually another free font courtesy of defont.com and you can find the link for that in the written portion of this tutorial. Now I'm just gonna use Go Bold, Bold Regular for this and there's a few other settings that I just wanna check. So I'm gonna change the size from 79 point to say 64.69 or so. And we're gonna check off this faux italic option here that's gonna give us a little bit of a forced italic style. All right, just so that we can kind of match the angle of our title treatment. And then go ahead and click on the color swatch here and we can change this color to the same yellow that we used for the word fitness in our title treatment. And the hex value for that was FCFF00. Go ahead and press return. And now, just like we did before, we may want to come in here and just adjust the kerning a little bit, all right, just to tighten up the spacing between the letters. So click between the R and the U, hold Alt Option and tap the left arrow a couple times. Click the right arrow to go between the next two characters and then hold the Alt Option key and tap the left arrow maybe just two times. Okay, now go ahead and create another new text layer. Press Command in the left bracket to move it below the original. Grab your type tool. And this time, let's type out your fastest race ever. Now, obviously this text is too big and we may wanna make some adjustments to it. So go ahead and press Command, Control plus A to select it all. And then let's change this font to something like Avenir, just a bit more of a, a plain sans serif font. So I'm gonna use Avenir Black. Okay, and if you don't have this typeface, you can use something similar like a Gotham, Arial, any you know clean looking sans serif will do. Now, what we want to do here is obviously just change the size a bit. So I'm going to try and make this about 21 point. Change the color from yellow to solid white. And now I'm just going to grab my move tool. Okay, position it somewhere about here. And I'm just going to use the shift key and the arrows to kind of nudge it into place there. Select my run text and then hold the shift key and the right arrow to maybe slide it over towards the right. Okay, somewhere about there looks pretty good. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is hold the command control key, select the run layer and the subhead below, press command J to duplicate both layers and then command control in the left bracket two times to move these both of these text layers below the original two. Now, press command T on the keyboard to do a free transform. Click, hold the shift key and just drag it down and now press return. Now I'm gonna grab my type tool, click inside of the run text box here and I'm going to change this text to the word hydrate. Press command control plus A to select the entire word and change this font size from 64.69 
to about 46 point, press return, and then go in and maybe just adjust the spacing or the kerning between the letters a bit more. Pay attention to where the A and the T are as there's usually a little bit more space there than we need. And also just make a few other adjustments as you see fit. Okay, I'm just gonna place this over here, grab my type tool once again and click inside the subtext. And I'm just going to change this to your life. Okay, so it'll say hydrate your life. There you go. So far, so good. Hold the command or control key once again and click on your life and then hydrate. Press command control plus J to duplicate it. Command control in the left bracket twice to move those layers down two places in the layers palette. And then press command T on the keyboard to do a free transform. Now I'm just gonna drag these two layers down here towards the bottom and place them below our bowl of cereal next to the towel here. Grab your type tool once again and click inside and we're going to now change the word hydrate to the word design. Okay, and just make a few other adjustments here just so that our spacing can be nice and even throughout. All right, that looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna select my move tool just to deselect that. Grab my type tool and click inside the subhead. And this time I'm going to change this to the life you want. All right, so we have run your fastest race ever, hydrate your life, and design the life you want. Oh, let me fix that so that it actually reads properly. Design the life you want. Okay, now at this point, we're just gonna add one more text box down here on the bottom. So what I wanna do is select the word design and press Command J, and then Command in the left bracket twice to move it down, Command T to do a free transform, and then we're just gonna place this towards the bottom here. Now grab your type tool and click inside, and we're just going to change this to say, and so much more inside, exclamation point. Now you can click a few times or press Command Control plus A to highlight all of the text. And let's use the same font, the Go Bold, with the faux italic applied. And let's just change the size of this to about 15.33 and change the color to white. Okay. And then we're just going to maybe tap it over a few times, somewhere about there. So we just want to make sure that we leave a little bit of breathing room around each of these blocks of text, okay? But once you are happy with the size and position of all of these text boxes here, select the very top one, which in this case should be the run layer. Hold the shift key and select the very bottom text layer, and then press command G to put them into a group folder. Double click the group one text and rename this folder to articles, right? Because these are the articles or the cover stories that people can read about inside of our fitness and design magazine. Okay, so what we're going to do now is double click on the articles group folder because we want to apply a similar effect that we applied to our title. And if you remember, the way that we do that is by coming into the blending options, going all the way down here to where it says underlying layer, and holding the alt option key so that we can split these two tabs apart. Now we're just going to move the right tab this time over towards the right until it's set to about 65. Okay, just to give us a little bit of that nice texture showing through, and then go ahead and click OK once you're happy with that. And there we go. All right, so at this point, we have our layout pretty much nailed down. If you guys wanna make any other adjustments to it, go ahead before we move on. All right, so once you are happy with everything, select the Objects Group folder at the top, hold Shift and select the BG folder at the bottom, and then press command control plus J to duplicate all four folders, and then command control plus E on the keyboard to merge them together into one layer. Now I'm gonna double click on the layer name and just call this merged, and then go ahead and be sure to save your file. So now that we have our layout looking pretty good, we're gonna go ahead and apply this to our magazine mockup. So I'm gonna go back to file, open, come into the freebies for the folder, and you will find the magazine mockup from Zippy Pixels in the freebie folder for this tutorial. Go ahead and open this up in Photoshop. And you'll see that you've got this nice clean document in here. So I'm just going to move this over a bit, close my character panel there, maybe zoom out a bit. And now if I just open up the magazine folder, you can see that there's a smart object on the top level here with the visibility turned off. And all it says is double click and replace your design. So let's go ahead and double click this layer and now we have an empty smart object layer. I'm going to return to our main cover layout, select the merge layer at the very top, 
Click and hold the Shift key, and then just drag and drop it over here into your empty Smart Object. Now I can return to the layout and just minimize that to get it out of the way for a few minutes. And now here in my empty Smart Object file, you can see that our cover fits perfectly. All right, so that's why we made it the dimensions that we did in the very beginning. Now all we have to do is save it. So press Command Control S on the keyboard, and then Command Control and W to close that tab. And there you go. We now have our magazine cover applied to this realistic magazine mockup. All right, so go ahead and collapse that magazine folder. But I want to play with this a little bit. I want to rotate the magazine cover itself, and I also want to maybe make it a bit larger. All right, so to do that, I'll press Command T on the keyboard, hold the Shift key, and maybe drag out a bit. And now I'm just going to rotate it counterclockwise a little bit as well. All right, maybe position it slightly over towards the left side here, just to give myself a little bit of room. And there you go. Now from here, come up to the File menu, choose Place Embedded, and we're going to now place in a background texture from H3 Design. All right, this time we're going to use the Scratch Surface JPEG file. So choose Place or hit Return. And this time, let's go ahead and hold the Alt Option key, move our cursor over any of the four corners of the bounding box, and just scale it up. We're not going to rotate it. We just want to scale it up until it fills our canvas. All right, press Command and 0 to make it fit to your screen or view it at any size that is comfortable. And then we're just going to click and drag this layer all the way to the bottom so that it's below this background solid color adjustment layer. Now we're going to select this layer, the white fill, and just press the number 4 to reduce the opacity to 40%. So we can see the scratch surface texture below, but it's not full on 100% opacity. It looks a little bit more kind of ghosted and a little bit softer. Okay, so it just doesn't stand out quite as much. Now I'm going to select the scratch surface smart object. Hold Shift and select the background solid color fill. Press Command G to put them into a group folder. Double click the group one text and just rename this layer background. Now I'll press Command Control plus O on the keyboard to open. And this time let's go ahead and go back to the freebies folder. And we're going to open the envelope from Zippy Pixels. Press Return to open that up. And we're going to do the same thing that we did before. Just move this tab to the side and click and drag the entire envelope group folder into your main document. Now we can kind of close that there and I'm going to press command T once again to apply a free transform. Maybe just rotate it a little bit so just so that it looks you know kind of interesting here below the magazine. You tap it over, position it however you like and then press return. Okay now if we come inside the envelope folder you'll see that we have some options here as well. So what we want to do is try to find the main object layer, which is inside of the making subfolder. And once you have it, what we're going to do is hold the Alt Option key and click on the adjustment layer icon, and then choose solid color from the top. And make sure to check off this box here that says use previous layer to create clipping mask. Click OK. And now for the hex value, go ahead and type in 7F2B3B, which is this nice dark red color, and then click OK and change the blending mode from normal to multiply. Okay, now we can close these folders here and it kind of matches the red from our cover. All right, so let's move on. Press Command O once again to open it up and we'll go back to the H3 Design resources and choose the Trunks PSD file. Okay, again, we're gonna move that tab to the side, click and drag the main folder into our document. Just click OK there. Now we can close that. And we want to make sure that this folder is above the envelope, but we're going to press Command T so that we can transform it and adjust it a bit. And I'm going to position it somewhere down here in the lower left corner, and then maybe just rotate the trunks a little bit too. Somewhere about there looks pretty good. Hit return once you're happy with the position. And now what we're going to do is come back, press Command O, and let's open the shoes now. We're going to add the shoes, move the tab to the side, click and drag the folder into the main document. Just click OK to bypass that. And let's make sure that our shoes are looking good. I'll press Command T to do a free transform. And then just move these down to the lower right corner. Now I'm going to rotate them a bit. Maybe move them down a little bit more. Somewhere about there looks pretty good. And then press Return. Command O once again to open the, let's go to the shoelace PSD. 
bring this one in. And this one I'm just going to place maybe somewhere here in the upper right. Somewhere about there looks good. Close it. Close the other window. And again, the shortcut for that is just Command Control plus W on the keyboard to close the tab. And now this time let's go back and let's open the weights, the vertical dumbbell here. And we can drag and drop this into our document as well. But let's make sure that it's above the magazine. So you can see when I brought it in here, it's below the magazine. If I just want to move it up one position in the layers, in the layers palette, I'll press Command, Control, and the right bracket. Now I can press Command T to do a free transform. I'm going to rotate it a bit, maybe position it somewhere over here on the right side of our layout. Okay, press return. Maybe just tap it in a few clicks just so we get a little bit of an overlap between the dumbbell and the magazine. Press Command and the tilde key, and then Command and W to close out of this window. And now let's go ahead and add another object. This time we're going to add the pen holder. All right, so for that we'll have to come back here in the zippy pixels area, and we're going to open up the pencil holder mockup. All right, move the tab to the side, click and drag the pen holder folder in here, and now press Command T to do a free transform. And let's place it maybe so it overlaps the shoes a little bit, as well as the magazine cover. And we're also going to need to just reduce the size a little bit. All right, that looks pretty good. Now let's come inside of this folder in the making subfolder. And we'll come into this other subfolder that says change object color. Now at the very top here, there is a blue photo filter applied. So if I turn that on and off, you can see what it's doing. If I, if I leave it off, it just leaves our pencils in this kind of gray color, which is fine because we want to change the color of these all together. But what I can use for this layer, even though the visibility will be off, is the layer mask that's attached to it. So if I hold the command or control key and click on the layer mask thumbnail, you'll see that it activates a perfect selection around the color of the pencils. Now, once I have that layer active, all I'm going to do is come down here to the adjustment layer icon, choose solid color, and now let's enter the hex value DEB224, which is this kind of yellow gold color. Click OK, and now let's change the blending mode from normal to color. Okay, and we've now just changed the color of the pencils. And we do want to leave the layer below it, this photo filter layer turned off, because you can see now, like if I turn it back on, it's kind of messing up the color. So just leave that off for now, and go ahead and collapse these other folders. Press Command and tilde to open up your other tab, and then Command W to close it. And from here, let's go ahead and open up our last object, which is going to be the business cards from Mockup Cloud. All right, so open those up. Now, inside of this mockup, you'll find that there are several business cards which are part of this mockup. You guys can use, you know, all of these if you want, but for now we're just going to be using the very top business card layer. So once you have the file open here, I'm going to turn off every layer except for the very top one. All right, and then I'm going to move the tab to the side and just click and drag this one into my main document. Now I can close the business card file, Command W, choose Don't Save. And I want to move this layer down a few positions. So press Command, Control, and the left bracket a few times, just until it's below the shoelace. OK? Then what we're going to do is press Command-T to do a free transform, make it a little bit smaller so it's not huge. And then let's just reposition it a bit. OK, rotate it a little bit, just until you find kind of a, a nice and interesting placement for it. Maybe put it slightly behind the pencil here and a little bit behind the shoelace. Then go ahead and hit return on the keyboard. Now come inside of this folder and double click on the Your Design Smart Object. Now again, this is going to be, it's not a completely empty Smart Object file. You do have a couple layers in here, but this is where we're going to drop, again, our background and title treatment from our main magazine layout. So I didn't close the file. I just kind of minimized it and kept it to the side because I knew that we would be using it again. Okay, so select the Title Treatment folder, TT, hold Shift, and select the BG folder, and then click and drag both of these over into your empty Smart Object. Now, we'll minimize the main cover once again, and what we want to do now is, you know, reposition these and play with the scale a little bit. 
So press Command Control plus T to do a free transform, Command Control zero to fit it to your screen, and zoom out so you can see the bounding box. And this time I'm just going to, you know, move this down. Somewhere about here looks good. Hit return. And now once again, we're going to have to just turn off this yellow border in the BG folder. So come in here, turn that off. Now go to your TT group folder and press Command T to do a free transform. Hold Alt Option and Shift just to scale it down a bit, just so our title treatment can fit somewhere nicely in the middle. And now if I press Command Control plus S on the keyboard to save this, and then Command W to close the tab, you will see that we now have our business card looking pretty good. But I want to add a little bit of a shadow to it. So I'm going to collapse the main folder here and double click on the group folder. And now let's go ahead and add a drop shadow. Now for the settings here, I'm just using a solid black fill. Okay, the blend mode is set to multiply. The opacity is 56%. And for the distance, I'm using six pixels, 5% for the spread and seven pixels for the size. Now I'm going to create two more copies here. So I'm going to press Command J once, then Command in the left bracket to move it down. Command J again, and Command left to move it down. And now I'm going to select both of these bottom two copies. So I'm going to select the bottom one, copy two, hold shift and select the layer just above it. And now press Command T to do a free transform. And so that I can position these in a more interesting way. Okay, so first I'm just positioning the second business card. Maybe we can have some of that text visible over here. Press return once you're happy with that. Now hold Command Control and click on the middle copy so that you will only have the very bottom copy selected. And then once again, press Command T to do another free transform and position your third business card. Somewhere like that looks pretty good. Press return to apply the changes. And now we're going to select the bottom copy, hold Shift and select the top copy and press Command G to put it into another group folder. And we're just going to rename this folder business cards. All right, so you can come in here, you can modify any of these objects, layers, layer names. You can really customize any of these as much or as little as you want. So have some fun with this, guys. I mean, there's some really cool mockups in here. Um, you can use it to create an awesome variety of things. But obviously, in this tutorial, I've just showed you one of the ways that you can use these objects to create a really cool fitness and design magazine inspired mockup. Be sure to check out the Essential Mockup Templates Bundle. I think you guys will really enjoy all the great stuff that's in here. There's tons of professionally crafted, high quality mockups that'll help you guys take your work to the next level. So I hope that you found this tutorial helpful and hopefully learned some tips and tricks along the way. Once again, this is Eric Vasquez here for Design Cuts. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.